All right, so this is just an update to my last um, pressing my pigments video, just because I changed up my recipe, if you like, a tiny little bit. Um, I just thought I would do an update so you can see how I'm doing this now. So, same process to begin with. I've got my pigment from Tammy Tanuka. Uh, I will just spray my pan to get some, to sanitize it a tiny bit, but primarily just to get some uh, liquid in the bottom of the pan so that the other ingredients meld easier. I'm still adding one drop of binder. There were some formulations I was using two drops of this um, isopropyl mirastate binder, but I have experienced a couple, only a couple, uh, but still a couple of my pans that are hard panning. So I've dropped that back down now to one drop again, which I've got here in this dropper. So one drop of the mirastate. Now the new addition comes in here where I am adding some dimethicone. So this is dimethicone 350, which you can get from um, TKB Trading. I have very, very oily eyelids and they're very hooded. So I'm very mindful about silicones on my face at all, but I'm finding adding one drop of this uh, isn't causing a problem for me on the eye. In fact, it's making my shadows or these pigments much, much smoother and they, they apply with more opacity. Uh, they're just a bit more creamy. So um, I add also just one drop of this. Was a drop in a little bit, but that's okay. Um, the other thing I add is uh, one drop of fractionated coconut oil. And again, this just helps with slip. It keeps it smooth. It keeps it easier to apply with a brush or a finger. It's no drag or grainy feeling. It's really just smoothing things out. So I'm adding one drop of that as well. So that's it for my new extras or changes to recipe. You can see here that the viscosity on those products is quite thick. They're quite gelatinous almost. So we just need a bit of alcohol to get those moving so that we can melt them all together Oops, really well. So let's blend those really well together. You shouldn't be able to see any pools or um, this should look like one very consistently smooth, clear liquid. It should not look like there's little bits of um, pools of other clear liquids sitting within this pool of clear liquid, if that makes sense. So we need them to be very, very well blended. Apologies for my table wobbling. I'm still using the uh, arm over the top for my camera, an overhead camera. And the arm is sitting on what is already quite a wobbly workspace, this little fold-out table. So apologies for that. Now this is 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol, so it evaporates really, really quickly. So um, you may need to add a little bit more. I can see a tiny little drop of something in there. Like, so can you, I'm not sure if the camera will pick that up, but there's like, there we go, a tiny little piece that wasn't blending together. So you remove that one. That's really, really uh, mixed well now. So a bit more alcohol before the pigment goes in, just to give it a good pull to drop into without it being too, too, too runny. I find, in my experience, if it's too, too, too runny, they tend to, um, they can be a bit more crumbly in the pan. All right, so the pigment. Trying to pick up be one of the chromatic, so you can see in the lid there, we've got some purple, blue, green, teal kind of color. These are the ones that you don't want to mess up when you're pressing pigments because A, they're expensive and B, they're just stunning. So you want them to work right out of the pan. So we start by adding some of that pigment into there, as usual. Mm. So I'm keeping a little bit in the in the pots these days, just so that I've got a reference point to go back to if I want to order more, or even if I just want to use it as a pigment, which I really don't, but I just like the idea of having the choice. So that's about how much I'll add for now. A bit more alcohol to get it moving, so that it's liquid without being too runny. You can already see in that pan that beautiful purple, green, green blue. Uh, multi-chrome shift and this is the part that we need to be patient because we really need to make sure that all of those ingredients we added with the alcohol the mirror state 
is the methacone and the, the coconut oil are uh, well, well, well blended into this mixture. Now the alcohol is 99% so it does evaporate quickly so don't panic if you feel like you need to add a little bit more but just add as little as possible just to keep it about this thickness so when I do that that's probably a tiny bit too runny but that's fine at this stage but at the end um, I look for it to be a little bit thicker than that before I drop it and set it aside so that's well mixed now so I'll throw in a, I'll, I'll need to add more alcohol to that I can tell when this next bit of pigment goes in it'll be too thick I'll add a bit more in there just retaining a little bit in the pot as I said a couple more drops just to help it blend in pretty easily Where the time really is here in making sure that everything's mixed all together. If you rush this step, that's when everything goes wrong. We'll get breakage, we'll get falling out of the pan, we'll get not picking up well, we'll get all the all the complications really come from not taking the time to blend these really well together. And each one, each the little pigment pot will feel a bit different depending on the micas and things that are in them. Some are heavier, some will sink more than others. In that case, you want to work with a thicker formula without it being too thick that you can't blend it. It's all just trial and error. You end up getting a feel for um, how each of them should be looking. I've now pressed over 100 Tammy Tanuka pigments. I have only lost two in that entire process. And when I say lost, I mean uh, two hard panned, just did not like being pressed at all. Um, I removed them all, started again. One of them I was able to rectify by not adding any binder. It just didn't need it. And the other one, which was a favorite of mine, Aviator, would not press at all, just refused. Even with no binder, it just doesn't, it didn't want to press. So there have been a couple of casualties along the way, but really two out of around about 100 is a pretty good success rate. So that's why I continue to buy these and I continue to press these. So that's where we are now. You can see it thickening now where it's not, it's just taking its time to come together on the bottom of the pan. That's where we want to leave it. Check for any air bubbles and then set that one aside to dry before we press. All right, quick little check-in. So this one is the one that we um, mixed and pressed earlier. It's now dry, so you can see the shift on that, the, the pink, purple, blue, all the way through. Just beautiful. So just to show you um, the um, output, I guess, of or the result of adding the coconut oil and the dimethicone. I'm just going to, so ordinarily I would pick these up with a brush or a finger once they're in my pan and dried. Uh, I use a brush or a finger uh, and definitely a glitter glue and primer on my eyes. But just for the purposes of this, just to give you an idea of how they swatch straight out of the pans, which is not their best performance. They are better on top of the primer, but like many um, shimmery formulas, but just to show you, I'm just going to take some of this on my finger So we're getting good pick up there. I haven't got a lot there. I don't want to use a lot because I haven't actually got a whole lot in this pan. But you can see great opacity um, and shine there. And then if I just swatch that one straight, like straight away out of the pan without any primer or just straight on my finger, that's the difference that the dimethicone and the, the uh, coconut oil make to, um, to the final result in these pigments. So that's why I'm loving adding those. 